check coming to you. Check one, two, test. Testing one, two, three, check. One, two.
Two tomorrow, I believe. They play at night though. Tomorrow night. If they would have won, they would have been off all together. They play. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Right on time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. All the players. You are correct, sir. Yeah. 
No, it's just it's the way they're trying to shuffle is because they're they're taking it, putting it on court two. Oh, so how many? Uh, and then uh, identify who who the four players is. and a coach. That's why we asked. Yes, sir. So they okay. show you um, the person. On the I'm gonna use a hand on my. Got it. Check one, two. Day tomorrow, man. Uh, no, I'm what you mean? No, I'm speaking here. 8 30 starts tomorrow. 8 30 p.m. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Late night, I should say. Yeah, late night, yeah. <laughs> what time are you plan on getting there? <laughs> I don't even know if we cover that game. Will it make any kind of newscast? <laughs> Maybe for y'all. I don't know about for us. <laughs> well, and it definitely depends on the results. <laughs> Brian, you said don't do this. Don't do this. That's better if you know. Cassie, I got you covered. The mic definitely sounds better. She won 10 yes, I didn't get it. I yeah, I saw that. <laughs> well, it was close for a while, but our boys came out and put some nice swings on it. But uh, we really respect those boys that we have. I mean, not many people gave them a chance. And look how they played against the number one team in the nation. I mean, you can just never <laughs> underestimate a team. I've been coaching for over 30 years, Seth, and I've never seen an easy game in the NCAA tournament. So, Coach, why didn't you uh, pitch one of your top two pitchers? Oh, we have belief in our entire staff. <laughs> we're not a we're not a two man team. Hey, Les. <laughs> I'm good. We just we just beat Lehigh. 
Both we had Vegas. We play so tough. Man. That Jack do say it's sweet. That Jack. That Jack guy. I do. So if LSU, well, if they win the ball. LSU, they win come back Sunday. Yeah. Come back at noon Sunday. Mm -hmm. Noon so, yeah. Sunday. So we could cover that game. It missed 10 o'clock Nick sports. And then there's no other if it, sports if it, cast to put that in. If it doesn't, then, well, if they win. Unless they lose, I mean, then yeah, the season's over. Right. right. But if they win, then, yeah, it's hopeless. It's <laughs> just here. Just here getting video. That's right. Well, not even getting video. Nice game. You can't get on it. There's no morning show. Well, there is a morning show. That's what I said. You might. Or a noon show. Yes. Thank you. If anyone needs a box tour, if you raise your hand, the young lady will definitely get you one. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Just hold them up, George. Okay. Got a head down right there. We don't give the attendance till after the second one. Correct. Yes. Session. Fifth per session. Good evening. As we uh, as we get prepared for Florida to come in, once again, I just want to remind everyone, uh, if you have a cell phone, if you could put it on silent and or turn it off for us, please. Uh, also, uh, when you ask questions, if you could raise your hand high. We have two young ladies coming around bringing a microphone to you. Uh, when you ask your questions, uh, please say your name, your affiliation, uh, and to whom you're asking the question, just say it loudly. Uh, everything is being transcribed for us, so we need to make sure you speak into the mic every time you ask a question, even if you ask them a follow-up question, just hold on to the mic and just ask your next question. All right? Thank you.
Good evening. Uh, at this time, we have University of Florida uh, on the dais. Uh, from my right to head coach Tim Walton, student athlete Aubrey Monroe, student athlete Caitlin Medina, student athlete Lauren Hager, Hager, excuse me, student athlete Nicole Dewitt. Uh, coach, general comments about the game, then we open up for questions. Yeah, which is uh, what a great environment today. Just uh, you know. We had a tough series with uh, with LSU back in um, March to open up the SEC play, and you know, I thought we just uh, we just didn't pitch as well as we need to. Hit the ball pretty decent, but fortunately for us, Lauren Hager didn't really pitch that weekend. She didn't start, so we, they didn't have a, a great look at her. She only came in relief twice, and what a what a, what a magical night uh, she had offensively and just pitching set the tone. Um, really thought she had good stuff. Off speed pitch was working really well locating really well and then obviously using the defense when she had to. The big play by Taylor Fuller in the first, Katie Medina in the, in the first inning, just to get that thing, uh, you know, the tag and turn. So overall, offensively, you know, Aubrey's sitting up here for a reason. You know, she's our, uh, you know, she's our, she's our catcher, but tonight she was uh, a great number nine all hitter, turning the lineup over and giving us many opportunities to score. And that's why we're able to score, you know, four runs against uh, one of the best ERAs in the country and one of the best pitchers. So just give uh, I give Aubrey credit in our offense. I thought they just did a good job grinding things out and just doing things that they had to, um, you know, to kind of get it going. And um, you know, I think uh, I think the article I read the other day or yesterday or last night was you know that we just have a little bit of a mediocre offense. And I thought tonight we were pretty well rounded and uh, you know we we're pretty poised to do small ball, big ball, and do some things with two strikes and two outs. So just uh, you know commend our athletes for for, for the stepping up today. Tim. All right, uh, we're gonna open up a question. Just raise your hand high and yell at him. Make sure we get your mic. Chris Harry with Gator Zone for Tim and for Katie and for Lauren. The first inning, they get the bases loaded with no outs. Um, Lauren, you can start. What's, what are you thinking about just during that time? Um, I felt okay. Um, I was hitting my spots fine. Um, a couple of balls definitely didn't feel soft, and um, that it happens. Um, people are going to get hits like that. Um, but Katie made an amazing play, double played it in the inning. Taylor Fuller did a great job, too, going home and saving her run, too. So I just credit my defense for that inning. Um, but I felt fine. My stuff was good. Um, I felt great. And like you said, she was hitting her spots. And I knew as soon as like, I looked at her, I was like, get me a ground ball. I'll get you out of this. And we were back to get a double play. And it just worked out in her favor. So it was great that she was able to get to me that ground ball. Coach. Uh, I think you know what Katie alluded to there was, you know, we, we had the, with Jay Quish, we, we ran tight to get the force at the plate. And um, after we got Jay Quish, you know, in the, in the bang bang play at first, with Kloss up, um, you know, Stewart's looking in the dugout, and I just you know gave him the green light to back up and turn the roll, and roll the double play, and I, I think it just got away from the runner a little bit too. With Katie was behind her instead of in front of her, and that's a that's a tough that's kind of the tweener ball, and she you know she was just right in the perfect spot, and she did she was she told Lauren, hey, let's roll this up to get it, let's go. And yeah, Pat the game with some Lauren, can you talk about you were the first player to go 60-60, now the first player to go 70-70. What that means to you, and also to get your 30th win tonight. I mean, it feels great. I'm just doing what I need to do up there um, in the circle and at the plate. I'm not really paying attention to the numbers so much right now because I'm just trying to take it game by game. But that is a really cool accomplishment, and I just hope I can keep it going. Yeah, a quick run, Associated Press. Uh, Coach Walton, uh, first inning, uh, you guys uh, got into a pretty good situation there. Uh, it was a 0 0 situation, even though there were bases loaded for both teams. Uh, I lost my thought. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff, I thought you just giving us a recap. <laughs> uh, Kyle Fredrickson with the Oklahoman. Uh, for Tim, you know, Lauren talked about giving up those three singles and still saying so, staying so confident, not getting shaken. Is that what you've come to expect from her at, at this point in her career on this stage? And, and how amazing is it that she can have that, that focus and, and that kind of moment? You know, I. I just fortunately for us, she's a senior. You know, she's really she's really had a great uh, you know career. We you know, very uh, well documented as far as how well she's been kind of raised to be this. You know, she she had a great high school career, great uh, international career. Now she's you know finishing off with a great collegiate career. She's just she's poised. I mean, I really feel like she's more prepared now. You know, again, it's easy to get frustrated in the first inning. She gives up a, you know a ball between in the infield and a bunt, nice bunt base hit, and then. Two strikes on Bell, and she, you know, she bloops it in between, uh, you know, left and short. I thought she was making good pitches too. You know, I, I saw the poise in her. Um, you know, I come to expect that. Yes, I mean, she's thrown so many shutouts this year, and uh, really done a good job not only using herself and her stuff, but being able to use her defense as well. 
up a little bit of ASP. If you could go over your thoughts when you saw the ball, just get over the fence for a home run. Oh, I was so excited. I like jumped up and I was just clapping. It was so cool. Like, And then looking at my team, they're just waiting for me at home plate. It was just the greatest feeling I've ever had. And then, Coach, you saw Kaylee yesterday have a big home run and then Cole today. How important is it to have the freshman contribute in this College World Series run? Yeah, and Kaylee had another nice at bat. Uh, you know, two, another, two more good at bats um, in this game. But, uh, I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's a proud moment. You know, I mean, I think, again, just watching the young kids get up there and gain confidence and keep gaining it and gaining it and gaining it. And, you know, I think Kaylee talked about it yesterday, just learning from our, from our players that have been there, done that, you know, and, and we're, we're a program to, to keep building and keep getting better, and we need those young kids to, to set the tone and, and to be the, the leaders maybe potentially next year. So it's really it's important. I, it, was a, it was a really good at bat. I mean, obviously, you know, with the, with the base running mistake followed by the home run, it was really a, a much needed, uh, you know, good two strikes win. Good, Sam. Is it, is it harder for somebody in college softball to be with a top tier pitcher and a top tier hitter in 2015 than it would have been 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago? You know, I, I, I would have a hard time answering that, I think, Graham, just because of the fact that when, when I saw the, on TV popped at the bottom at Lawrence 60, I would have assumed that somebody else had done that before. You know, I, I didn't realize that that had never been done before. So uh, I'm going to say now it's going to, it's, I, I don't know that it's, it, it's a hard accomplishment. I told him in the recruiting process, it's hard to be a pitcher and a hitter at this level. You're going to have to dedicate yourself. We've seen some good ones. Nancy Evans at Arizona comes to my mind. Jenny Finch at Arizona comes to my mind. Uh, Ali Carter at UCLA comes to my mind. Some good two-way players. It's really difficult. So I don't, I don't think there's any, I don't know that it can compare, but I know it's, it's probably going to be very difficult now, and it was very difficult in, in the old days, too. Okay, quick run, Associated Press. I'm going to try this again. Uh, Lauren threw 79 pitches today, 81 against Tennessee, and you get to rest. How important is that, and what kind of position does that put you in going forward? Yeah, I think the, the, the greatest day off at the College World Series is a Saturday day off. It's a, it's a great feeling to, to have to be beaten twice. Um, you know, it's a great feeling to get your players some, uh, some rest, some, uh, some shopping, uh, you know, other little things that we like to do on those days. Uh, really excited about having that. I think, you know, again, she's, I mean, 81 pitches yesterday was awesome. And 79 again today, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. You know, it's a good feeling for her to be able to, to, to use her defense and get some quick and easy outs. Scott Wright with the Oklahoma. Uh, Nicole, two questions for you. First of all, um, eight of the ten hits tonight came from the top half of the lineup. Uh, do you guys really kind of feed off of each other? A lot of good hitters up, up there. Do you uh, kind of get that contagious feeling whenever you guys start hitting like you were tonight? Yeah, I think when one of us gets a hit, it just like leads the others, and it just wants us to just keep going and keep getting on base and moving runners and scoring runs. And then uh, we've obviously had a lot of rain here uh, the last week and, and month, really. Uh, and, and left field has been one of the tough areas for them to uh, to get a tarp out there and, and cover. Uh, I was just curious what the uh, what the field has been like out there to play in left field. I mean, it's pretty mushy and shallow left field, but you just have to play in it. You can't you can't complain about it. You just have to deal with it. Lauren, when uh, you got your 70th home run, they actually ESPN put a graphic with you and Babe Ruth. <coughs> Together as the only the only people to have seventy wins and seventy home runs. What's your reaction to that? I mean, again, that's so cool. I mean, it's hard because he's like got a lot more than me. And he's Babe Ruth, but like again, if we're the only two people to do it, that's like so amazing. And I'm just proud of my brother. But I, don't know, I mean, it's really cool and um, something that I'll remember forever. Seth Lewis, WBRZ, to Lauren and then Nicole. Was there any additional motivation today um, with LSU beating you guys in Gainesville two out of three from back here? Lauren. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I was like scanning. <laughs> no, it's um, just I know LSU uh, beat you guys two out of three in Gainesville. Was there any additional motivation today knowing that that happened earlier in the season? Um, I mean, yeah. Uh, they're a good team. Um, we're fired up to play them every time. Um, Again, they're a good team. We, of course, we want to beat everyone we play. Um, but again, us losing to them obviously gave us a little bit more fire, but it also gave us a little bit more experience against them. Against them. So, um, yeah, they're a good team. We really want to beat them. And to Nicole as well. Uh, Nicole. Um, just like Lauren said, we we were ready for them. We just wanted to come out, play them, and beat them because we did lose to them twice in the first week of season, and we just had that revenge on them. 
Aubrey as the so-called captain of the defense to see everything play out the way you know this defense makes plays. What is that like from your vantage point just to see? I know I, I think I asked the same question last week in the regional too. Every these great defense plays always happen. What's it like from your vantage point to see? That? It's really cool, um, especially in that first inning with Katie making that super heads up play. I mean, because I'm watching everything kind of happen. I see her move in for the tag, and I'm just hoping I get really excited. Um, kind of same thing last year when we were trying all those double plays. It's really cool because I'm not actually involved in the actual play, so I get to kind of see everything pan out. I'm not running to go back first. I'm kind of just I'm trailing the runner, but it's really fun, and it gets me super pumped up. I'm super excited for Katie, super excited for Lauren. It's been awesome working with her, especially this year, just watching her kind of become the pitcher that she's kind of always wanted to be, watching her kind of get these awards. It's been really, really cool to work with her. And I mean, we've always been the pair that kind of gets really pumped up. And so sharing that with her has been really cool and being able to watch, I mean, watching a pitch come in and knowing it's a pretty pitch and just being able to get excited with her is a really good feeling. And to follow up on that, if I, if I may, you gave up 27 runs the last time you played LSU in the series in Gainesville. Did you think there'd be a lot of people crossing the plate in, in this game? Um, I think with our mentality going into this game, no, we knew it was going to be kind of a dog fight. We knew they're a good team. They play with a lot of energy. We play with a lot of energy. So I knew it was going to be kind of tight and that we were just going to probably beat up each other a little bit and try to break each other's momentum. But I knew, I figured it would actually be more of a low scoring game than a high scoring game. Nico Tan, ESPN 850 coach, uh, Chris Harry mentioned that you guys allowed 27 runs to LSU back in the series. So when you prepared for this game, um, what was the main difference you saw from uh, today's game from and, and those games in that series? Um, I think in those, in those series, LSU had uh, some big first innings. So the double play in the first inning was probably really the key to, uh, you know, to limiting you know, the run scored. Um, you know, we were down in every one of those games by a lot. I think we were down nine nothing on Saturday. So, you know, ultimately, I think we just uh, the first inning double play was was huge. Um, and again, like I said, to open up, Lauren Hager didn't start any of those games leading into the LSU series. I think that was a big, um, a big key. And uh, I think obviously the way she's throwing the ball right now is a, is, is is one of the bigger differences too. And then as a follow up. You guys have double plays in each of your last three games. As a coach, how much pride do you have when you see when you guys have a knack for turning those double plays? Yeah, you know it's um, it's it's difficult to turn double plays in softball. It's a, it's a tough thing to do, and uh, especially when you're playing some of the best. And on this stage, to be able to turn double plays and how important those double plays have all been. The one Taylor Schwartz turned yesterday, the one Katie turned today, the one we turned at the um, you know in the Super Regional was phenomenal against Kentucky. Um, just, just those things. I mean, they anytime you can get two for one, I'm going to take my chances. So I think that's a big, huge bonus when we can, we can get that thing done like that. Katie, can you talk about the things that were running through your mind as a ball state? So you could, I mean, you could go home, you could go to second, and then the rudder flashes in front of you. Can you just talk about all the things that were going through your mind there? Before the ball was hit to me, I kind of knew where I was going to go. I was either going to go to second, or I was thinking, okay, if she's coming across me, since I'm back, I'm just going to tag her. And I got the ball, and she just happened to be right in front of me, so I just put the tag on her, and I threw it. I knew Laura was going to make a good pitch and give it a ground ball, so it's just those little things of making sure that I know what I'm going to do when I get the ball. Hey, Coach Jacques Duce, WAFB uh, Television. What, was there a key to getting Hoover's pitch count up, and did you feel feel like you kind of wore her down a little bit, or were you just you know hitting home runs like you normally did? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, it's, I just a chuckle. Sorry. Um, I think. I think the the that's what we do. I mean, let, you know, it's we get criticized a little bit for some things with our offense, uh, you know, whether it's walks or hit by pitches or it's what we do. I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is to swing strikes, and um, you know, and, and I think that's what we try to do. We try to swing strikes. So if the team throws balls or throws balls in the batter's box or they don't throw pitches over the plate, and I train my hitters to swing strikes. And so if you're going to criticize someone for 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 maybe not being as fun to watch in some categories. I mean, we, we want them to throw strikes. So I think the goal is, again, for us to swing strikes. And uh, with, with, when, when people throw strikes and we're on time, good things happen. Um, it, we weren't really going into the game trying to, trying to um, you know, make her throw strikes or grind her out. I mean, but that's just what we do you know, as, a, as a whole program anyway. Jerry, what was doing your college sports report? Coach, you just mentioned something about uh, double plays. If you can't expand on that, because when I see a, a double play, I'm just glad to see a good one. 
but you mentioned something about, it's more about spacing now because you mentioned about it's harder to do as you have an off-game softball. Yeah, just with the, with the 60 foot bases and the speed of the runners and the, you know, we have a little bit more left-handed play in softball versus baseball and typically um, you have to make good decisions, you have to make them quickly. And so I think it's harder to get a double play. You know, I look at some baseball double plays. I saw somebody the other day had like 83 double plays. You know, and if, if softball team turned 83 double plays, um, you know, they'd be they'd have the best fielding percentage in the country. So I think overall, it's, it's just more difficult to get a double play because of the speed, because of the shortness and proximity of the bases uh, on the first. We have time for one more question, Brian. You know, at the time, you know, coming off of what we were we were going with, we um, you know we had uh, Alicia Ocasio had, had thrown some some good. You know, she beat Michigan. She beaten um, uh, I think she beat Michigan twice and beaten Oregon. Um, it just the matchup, we were you know trying something again. It's the same thing I did last year. I think Delaney started our first weekend last year against um, I don't remember who it was at this point in time. Maybe it was Ole Miss or, or Alabama was the second series. Um, well, just trying to figure out what we have. And um, at the time, Lauren was throwing the ball good, um, but she wasn't throwing the ball like she is now. And um, after that weekend, or even kind of leading up to that weekend, you know, she she really said, you know, Coach, I really worked hard, and I want I want I want Friday nights. And um, and I said, well, prove it to me. And go out there and make sure your bullpens are good, and go out there and win ball games. And um, and she has. Now again, I call it like it is. You know, we we were going a different direction. She wanted it to go the other direction, and she earned it. You know, and I think that's what makes me the most proud is somebody who can, you know, can can have a have a meeting with a coach, call a meeting with a coach, and say, "This is what I want," and I'm willing to work for it. And um, you know, for that, like I said, she's she's been rewarded for it. All right, Coach Sue, now please want to thank you for your time. Uh, once again, Florida will play on Sunday at noon. Thank you.
Okay, at this time, we have LSU head coach Beth Tarina, student athlete Carly Hoover, student athlete Bianca Bell, and student athlete Kelsey Claus. Coach, uh, general comments about the game, then we'll open it up for questions. I think we understand why Lauren here is the player of the year. Um, she's a special player. She had a great day. Um, we didn't make very good adjustments against her on the mound, and you know she had the big hit that really was the difference in the ball game. So. Um, we've got to play better. We've got to make adjustments. But, you know, ultimately, I'm still really confident in our team. I think we're still in a good spot to make a good run at this. We still have plenty of pitching left. Um, you know, I, I feel really good about our chances still. All right, we're going to open up for questions. Just raise your hand. Someone bring a mic down. Got a quick run associated with us. Coach, how disappointing, I guess, is it to load the bases in the first inning and then not get anything out of it, especially when you're playing against a pitcher of this magnitude? Yeah, I think that was a big turning point, and it, even though it was so early in the game in the first inning, I think if we can capitalize right there, you know, after we shut them down um, on their offensive side, if we can capitalize right there, I think it puts them in a different mindset. I think it's a completely different ball game. So it was, it was a huge moment. She made big pitches. That's why she is who she is. Uh, Jacques Duce, say WAFE TV. Uh, Carly, can you talk about did, did you have your strength? Did you feel good going into the innings, or did you get a little tired, or, or how did you feel? Um, no, I wasn't tired at all. I was really pumped up for this game. Um, I really was thinking before I came in here, and I really can't think of a single time this season that we haven't um, come back ten times stronger. So I'm just ready for tomorrow. Morgan for Daily Rumbly. Carly, um, with the bases loaded in the first, how did it feel to get out, get them out um, of that with a strikeout? Um, it felt good. Well, on top of the strikeout, I mean, our defense was strong all day. Uh, we made that double play, everything that we were doing all day. We were really strong. So um, just hopefully our bats are working tomorrow. Les East with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Kelsey, not only as a hitter who had to face Lauren, but also seeing her as, as a catcher, what, what impresses you so much about her as a pitcher? Um, as a pitcher, Lauren it keeps a really good mix of pitches. Um, she has an off speed too, which is really good. And then her heart steps pretty hard. It's almost to 70 miles an hour. So, um, I mean, they call a really good mix of pitches. And I mean, she, you know, she's a veteran. She's a senior. She's been here three times before. She knows what she's doing. So, um, and then on the opposite side, she, you know, I think that's to her advantage with hitting. She's a very good hitter as well. So, I mean, like Coach said, that's the reason she's a player of the year. How do you know? Coach, could you just speak to, um, you guys got 27 runs against them uh, in the series in Gainesville. What did, did you think it was going to be that kind of a game you know, tonight? Of course not. I mean, this is a different team, I think, that we're facing. I think Lauren Hager's in a different spot. I think you know she's continued to get better as the season's gone on. So we knew we had our work cut out for us. We knew this wasn't going to be a blowout by any means. You know, We thought we would compete with them a little bit deeper into the game and you know it never was out of hand by any means but you know I thought we would have more opportunities with runners on base and things there but um, it, by no means that I think we were going to walk in and, and blow out the University of Florida who's the reigning national champions I mean that never crossed my mind no are there any other questions Bianca, what did you see from Car or um from Lauren Hager today? Uh, she just did really got a good job um, jamming us on the inside pitch. Um, 
she just made adjustments on us and uh, just found a way to get it done for her team. Uh, Coach, did you kind of struggle with the decision of who to pitch today, or was it easy? And then how do you feel about your pitching trying to fight the loser's bracket moving forward? Well, I think if anybody can come through the, <laughs> the loser's bracket, it's our team. We have the most pitching depth, I think, in the tournament. So, you know, I feel really good about what we have left. You know, we haven't even put Allie Wall, Jasper, who just was named an All-American on the mound yet. So, I mean, we have a lot of good options left. Um, I feel really confident in our depth there. And, you know, I thought the decision to give the ball to Carly today was a good one. How can it not be with her, you know, postseason numbers, her ERA, the things that she's done for us here in the postseason? I think anytime we're giving her the ball, we have a great opportunity to win ball games. Coach, how much preparation did, did you guys do against uh, Hager as opposed to scouting Acasio or Delaney Gorley? I would say 100% of our preparation was for Hager. Um, you know, they hadn't started the others in a while since I think the first game of the regional. So, um, you know, we were pretty confident that's who we were going to get, try to prepare for her. She's tough to prepare for, though. She does a lot of different things. I mean, she puts the ball hard on your hands and then throws a changeup away for, from you. It's tough to prepare for. And, and we know she's throwing well right now. I mean, that's the whole thing. It seems like Florida has a senior pitcher step up this time of year every year that really does a great job for him. And, and like I said before, we even you know, took the field. Is Florida understands how to win. They understand how to win this time of, this time of year. Um, we're still young. You know, we still have a lot of young kids. I'm sitting up here with you know, two juniors, a freshman. We have a lot of underclassmen in the game today, and that's something we're still learning. So you know, I think we have a really talented team. I think we're getting better every time we step on the field in these situations, and I think we'll be better from this. Adam Schick, Gator Sports Network. This is for Coach Tarina. In all five games now, the team that scored first has gone on to win. How much does it change the complexion of the games on this stage when you're going in with a deficit? Yeah, there's no question. Like I said, um, you know, I think if we can score with the bases loaded there in the first inning, it's a completely different ball game. I think it just gives your defense so much more room to work. I think your pitchers get to pitch. You know, they get to attack more. They get to pitch ahead more. They get to, you know, go at hitters a little bit more. I think it completely changes the, the dynamic of the game scoring first. And obviously we know our team does a better job when they score first, but I would think every team in America would say that same statement. So um, we played from behind. We can play from behind. Um, but we would have loved to score first. To the players, uh, what can you draw on losing to Arizona State way back when and then going on a roll again to try to do that, you know, again here in the World Series? Um, well, like I said earlier, I can't think of a single time we haven't come back stronger. Um, we even beat Florida twice in the series in regular season. Uh, we scored nine runs in the first inning. That was great. I have 100% confidence in this team. Um, like Coach said, we have the depth to do it in every single way. I think um, we have the depth in hitting, pitching, defense, everything. And um, I know my team, and I know we're very, very capable. Yeah. I just say that we need to flush it out, um, let that everything go, and just come back stronger um, tomorrow, and just try to get the timely hits and make the timely plays when it, um, when it's needed, and just get the job done. Sure. Um, I just think we have a lot of fight, and all of us want this really, really bad. This isn't. We weren't satisfied with just making it to the World Series. Our goal was to win it, and I mean, it's just about how much fight you have, and I think this team has a lot of fight, and you can see that with regionals, how we won the game against Nebraska, then beat Arizona twice on Sunday, and then put up the numbers like we did against Arizona. So I think it just comes down to fight and how much we won it, and we won it really bad. All right, are there any other questions? If not, Coach, student athletes, thank you for your time. Okay. LSU will play the winner of Alabama, Oregon on tomorrow at 8.30. Thank you.